connect your interests with the community's needs. Correct. What a great tagline there, and of course a real push. A lot of folks do have interests that would absolutely dovetail very well with different parts of the community's needs. That is correct. Uh, and I, I, we're excited about it, and I think it's really going to... We launched it especially now at the Christmas time. Right, sure. And we're hopeful that more... It's good, but it, don't forget, it will be here year-round. The goal is for all the nonprofits throughout the years to constantly be able to put their needs up right. for local donors to be able to find out what their needs are. Speaking of Christmas, are you done with the shopping? It's a week from tomorrow. I'm, excuse me, Santa. Is Santa done with his, his or her shopping? We're getting close. My yeah, wife yeah. and I are teamed up, and we're yeah. doing our best to get everything done to try to avoid that last-minute Christmas rush. That's right. Absolutely. It is getting tight right now. If a family needs, if folks need to get off to work now or get family off to school, what's the best? Is there a good phone number to call to learn more about the foundation or a there website? Is. You talked about the yes. website. Our website, of course, has a plethora of information that anyone could, could access. Of course, right. that community wish list is there. Right. That website is just, of course, www.walkemall.com. CF. Right. It's walk em all CF as in community right. dot org, not right. dot com. And our phone number is an easy one to remember because it's three five seven give. Three five seven G I V E. Right. Very and, easy. Right. Which I think so four, that is four four eight three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very easy. Uh three five seven four four eight three. And a lot of folks need to call even to learn how to spell walk em all, which a lot of people probably have trouble with. I think that's W A C C. A M A W. That's correct. Okay, good. Yet yeah, sometimes that first C right. drops out, but they'll find a way to get there. The website does have tremendous information. It does, and it, and a lot of times this time of year, Greg, that um, you know, being the end of the year, there's a lot of people who want to talk to the community foundation for tax purposes yeah. about creating yeah. these donor advised funds. Great point. Yeah. Our busiest time of year is the month of December, and because not only are we connecting our donors for Christmas, we're also creating new funds as people want to and need to for tax time end of year giving. Right. It's a great opportunity to create a new fund with the Waccamaw Community Foundation. That's a great point. We've got about 10 minutes, Jonathan. How would, what are those steps when they, when they call in and they say, hey, I've got some money, what did, how much money do they, do they need to have to set up a donor advised fund? And, and what are the steps that would be involved for a viewer? Creating a, a family type donor advised fund, we usually shoot to try to have something around a $5,000 amount because okay. Therefore, that covers all the fees because if someone's going to give just a thousand dollars or a couple hundred dollars, right. it might be easier for them to give that. Sure. But how it really works, Greg, is fairly simple. Um, you can take the proceeds, say, say cash, but right. the best gift to give to a community foundation is appreciated assets. What I mean by that are stocks, bonds, even real estate. A prime right. example is just this week we took in a a, a, a local businessman had a condominium. And we, saw, and we took title to the condo, mm -hmm. and we listed it for sale. We will sell that condominium and place the proceeds into his donor advised fund. Great. Therefore, that donor doesn't have any capital gains. So if he mm -hmm. bought that condominium, say, for $75,000 four years ago, and it's worth right. $100,000 today, right. he gets the full $100,000 put into his donor advised fund. Mm -hmm. Now he and his family throughout the years can use that money that's in their donor advised fund to make the gifts to the causes that they truly care right, about. Right. And we've handled all the back office work of selling the real estate and doing that. All we needed from him were the assets. But as simple as creating a fund like that. Now, what you can do is we also have something that we've just started that we're excited about. It's called our Acorn Funds. Good. And this fund can be started with $1,000. Mm. What we're trying to do here, Greg, is get donors who are passionate about the organizations that they care about. I'll give you a prime example. We had a a donor who was passionate about fostering hope yes. uh, at a Conway, and they created a acorn fund with a thousand dollars. What that means is they started an endowment fund for fostering hope with a thousand dollars. And what that means is any now anyone else can actually give to this the endowment fund to support fostering hope. That endowment fund won't become what we call an active fund until it reaches ten thousand dollars. Good. Once it reaches ten thousand dollars, and that endowment fund. For life, will be sending income to fostering hope forever. Right, right. Um, and the goal there is we wanted to be able for nonprofit agencies as well as individuals. What a great Christmas gift! Oh yeah. To put a thousand dollars to a nonprofit organization to really show, and what we're trying to do is educate the community about why we need endowment funds right. and why these organizations that we are passionate about need the long-term sustainability. And, the re and you highlighted earlier, again, that simple question, why would I give it to the Waccamaw Junior Foundation rather than just writing a check to Fostering Hope? Right. 
and that the reason there is to make sure that they're sustained years to come and not just right. for operating right. expenses. Right. And we all know that Fostering Hope needs our operating income, and we don't sure. want to take that away. But if you wanted to, if that was the type of gift you wanted to give and put money into that fund, mm -hmm. that fund, again, is going to be here forever. Right. So we we'll want to make sure that Fostering Hope has operating income, not just today, yeah. but 20 years down the road. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with any other local nonprofit agency that mm -hmm. you could do the same for. We believe that it's very important to start building those endowment funds now. Mm -hmm. So we all know that the government's not going to be here forever to take care of these organizations. Sure, sure. And you know, it's unfortunate, but all our, we, you and I are so much involved day to day from fundraisers. Everybody's having a fundraiser. Oh no, yes. And, and, and they're wonderful things. They're a great social opportunity. But you know, if we can start to build some of these programs and endowment funds for these local organizations now, they may not need to have fundraisers every year. That's a great point. And, and that's really what we're striving for here at the Community Foundation. That's a great point. Well, of course, recently we helped celebrate, I know, National Philanthropy Day and the Waccamaw Community Foundation was a big sponsor of that event. Yeah. I think the first annual, which was very special, highlighting and I think honored some of, both individuals, as well as student, as well right. as corporate philanthropy, seeing the Jacksons recognized, but also one of the founders, co-founders of the Waccamaw Community Foundation. That was a special day and that student who uh, deeply deserved, along with the other candidates there, deeply deserved the honor as recognized as the student philanthropist of the year. Who was that, the uh, the individual philanthropist? Was the, it Jimmy and Emma Lou? It was Jimmy and Emma Lou Johnson. And, right. of course, Jimmy happens to be the chair today, but he was one of the founding board members, along yes. with David Bishop of the Walkabaw Community Foundation. Right, right. But, you know, people like Jimmy and Emma Lou, not only was he a founder of the Walkabaw Community Foundation, he's one of the founders of the United Way. Right, sure. Um, and so Jimmy's just been in the community and talk about a local resident born here, right. high school in Conway, and right. first graduate of Coastal Carolina University. Oh, yeah. What a wonderful uh, family that was. And we were so excited to be one of the key sponsors for the Association of Fundraising Professionals. Absolutely. Right. We're really glad that that organization is here to help spread the word about philanthropy and help grow and teach the community about how to become philanthropic. Oh, yeah, Jonathan. Absolutely. Who are some of the other folks here in the office in the Walkabaw Community Foundation? Is this the only location? Who are some of the other folks that help make the organization tick? Okay. Well, obviously, you know, I, we talked earlier about our board members, but here at the Walkabaw Community Foundation, we currently have four staff members. Okay. We have an administrative assistant. That's Marby Slink. Right. We have a, a financial officer, which is Donna Lewis. Good. And I have a development officer, which is Liz Mansfield. Yes. And we are all here in this office. Right. We do have a small, what we call satellite office in the Myrtle Beach area. Mm -hmm. And the reason we maintain that office in Myrtle Beach on 48th Avenue is to be able to see those donors and meet with the donors who don't who can't travel all the way to Merle's Inlet. Sure. And, you know, although we're right on the county line, which we right. find one of our great locations for us, oh, we're a yeah. stone's throw to the uh, county line right here. Right. And since we do service both Ori and Georgetown County, it's really a great location for the Community Foundation. It is. And, of course, a gift from a donor there, uh, th this magnificent facility, what right. better opportunity to recognize that gift by, than actually just moving in here. And that donor really wanted to see this building with its heritage and its its antiquity sure, and being sure. here for so long preserved. And Absolutely. I think that was a tribute to the donor himself, which was Mr. Scalise and one, and one of our board members. But the nice part, too, about that story in and of itself is what we were just talking about, Greg, is mm -hmm. someone was able to take a piece of real estate and right. make a gift. Right. You know, it's not just the Community Foundation. There's so many nonprofits, as you well know, oh, Greg, yeah. with all your involvement yeah. in the community, who need space. Mm -hmm. And if you may have an office space, right. but instead of selling that office, how about have it appraised and donate that real estate yeah. to the local charity that you want to support, you still get the wonderful tax deduction for that, and the right. local nonprofit agency has now reduced their budget dramatically that's by not a, having to have it. That's an space. excellent point. And there is tremendous information about Sam and right. Sk Cindy and their entire family there at WacomallCF.org. Right, there great, is. You've got other great information on there as well as a lot of frequently asked questions. Right. And I'm sure folks want to know, just, and you broke that down, how easy it is to give, and it's very easy. It is. And we try to do that because, you know, really our goal is connecting donors with the causes they truly care about. Mm -hmm. So if we can help a donor create a donor advised fund and then help them spend that money on a local nonprofit, right. that's what we truly want right. to do. And we also do other things. We had a local donor who, you know, was really passionate about education. But she didn't want to leave all her assets to just one educational entity or didn't right. know exactly. Because we all know in 20 years education is going to change. 
Mm. So what she did is she left her entire estate to the Waccamaw Community Foundation and created an education fund. Oh, come on. Fund. Her no. entire her estate, estate to the Waccamaw she Community Foundation. left her entire estate. So, and, and when she passes away, her entire estate will come to the Community Foundation. But what she's done with that is create what we call a field of interest fund. And that, and that field of interest fund is the family-named educational fund. Right. So now what will happen is throughout the years, this organization will have an endowment fund in her name. And we'll be able to support all the causes that deal with education within Orion Georgetown County. And of course, education being a broad category, right. it gives this organization, the Waccamaw Community Foundation Board of Directors, the leeway to determine what the needs are that year mm -hmm. and, and an ability to make grants in this person's name forever right. in the field of education. That's tremendous, Jonathan. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Okay. Thanks so much for being with I us this morning. It. Thanks for hosting us all week. Well, we thank you very much for the opportunity, and thank you for the interview. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Jonathan Kreskin, the president of the Waccamaw Community Foundation, coming up next. A foundation for the entire Waccamaw region. We've got the largest county in the state the fourth largest county in the state, right here on the county line. They're making a difference, not only in both counties, but impacting the state, impacting the southeast, impacting the country. When nonprofits do well here, they could have, have an impact all over, all over the world for that matter. Simple phone number, 357-GIVE. If you can't remember that phone number, turn off the TV, 357-GIVE. Easy. Take the time to write that down, 357-4483. Go online to wacomallcf.org, wacomallcf.org. It's a tremendous website, a lot of great information there. There's also that wish list, the wish list for this very important time that Jonathan talked about. I'm sure you probably got the mailer last week that went out to so many area residents. If you didn't, go online to wacomallcf.org. How about this slogan, connecting people who care with causes that matter. Connecting people who care with causes that matter. You see it in Jonathan, you see it in Liz, you see it in all the folks here in the office, all the volunteers in the community that are wrapping around. Who would have thought that when they kicked off less than a decade ago with $50,000 that they'd almost be pressing $20 million today? Right at 19, uh, it's going to be a tremendous 2007, an even more exciting 2008, and for many years to come as nonprofits in this area grow thanks to the Waccamaw Community Foundation.